example of uh, plain carbon steels, the 10, uh, the 1000 series. These are very cheap and so they're very widespread in use uh, in construction. A36 hot rolled steel has a carbon content of about 26%. Oh, sorry, 0.26. Please. 0.26%. Please. 0.26%. Sorry about that. <coughs> and uh, it's, it's very commonly used for structural members of buildings. It's cheap. Well, not exactly cheap, but the cheap one of the cheapest um, uh, steels. And it's very easy to join uh, through welding and... Uh, you know, relatively easy to shape, etc. So it's very useful for uh, that type of application. We see here car bodies I mentioned uh, at 0.15%. Uh, um, but later on we'll realize that uh, the, the steel is used for cars these days are actually quite complicated. <coughs> we talked about uh, steels around the 0.3% mark being used for construction, they're called mild steel, okay, mild steels. And then medium carbon steels start around 0.6% or, or uh, uh, between, sorry, 0.3 to 0.6%, which can be used for machinery uh, uh, bodies, etc., or machinery components. And then high carbon steels are used for springs and railroad wheels just to name a couple, a few applications. Another example of a steel you might commonly find at uh, a metal yard is uh, the 4100 uh, series of steels or sometimes called uh, chrome alloy or uh, chrome moly steels and these have a distinctive light grey uh, look to them um, and uh, but they are used, they have a, a high strength to weight ratio and are easy to weld and so they are uh, very useful for building uh, frames that have to be light and strong so in this case it's being used uh, for the frame of a Ducati uh, motorcycle, high performance motorcycle and uh, also they are used to make um, uh, frames for a certain light aircraft Steels between 0.5% uh, carbon to 1.5% carbon uh, are, uh, are used to, for tool steels, okay, used for, for cutting other, other materials and other steels. And uh, they can be, what's important about them is their hardness. They're not very tough, okay, they're, 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 they're brittle, they can fracture, but they're hard, so they make good uh, cutting tools. And uh, what's important about them is how do you harden them? We already talked about martensite and how you can harden a piece of steel by putting it into the martensite state by quenching it, by heating it up into its austenite and then quenching it uh, using, um, uh, say, water or oil to cool it quickly. So that's one way to do it, uh, one way to quench your steel. But there's other ways, uh, depending upon the alloying components, uh, the cooling rate to harden the material can be different. And so we see uh, water hardening, that these are tool steels that are, uh, are difficult to harden, so you have to harden them very, you have to harden them quickly by plunging into water, or hardening, so you're cooling, uh, I think, a little bit less uh, cooling rate. And now here we have easily hardenable steels. These will harden just in air. Nothing special required to quench them. You heat them up. You heat them up and uh, you, you just let it cool down right there and it will harden. So you've got air hardening and then here a class D uh, high carbon, high chromium content steels, tool steels. Okay, so I just looked at you know, three examples out of the range of steels here, uh, just to give you some idea of the connection between the uh, the categorization and some practical uses. Now I want to go back to a more of a, a theoretical look at things, or, or uh, 
uh, metallurgical look at things. <coughs> <coughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, and by categorizing steels, we understand that this point here, let me just use a, this point here, this composition here, is the eutectoid composition. Okay? So, 0.76, that's what the eutectoid composition is. Oops, excuse me. Let's get back to our document. There we go. So here, zero, oh, I think it's going to let me write. That's, excuse me for that. There we go. I'm having trouble using my, there we go, 0.076%. That's right here, okay? That is the eutectoid composition, the eutectoid composition of steel. If we're below that, we have a hypo-eutectoid composition of steel. Above that, we have a hyper-eutectoid steel. Let's look at a hypo. Here we have an example of a hypo-eutectoid steel. Now, if we make it red hot, let me use a different color. Okay. If we make it red hot, then we're going to be in this phase region right here. Oops. That's working, okay. We're going to be in this phase region right here. Okay, so the composition is uh, about here, uh, I don't, I'm not sure, I mean, oh, okay, let's just say roughly about 0.3, 0.25%. So that is less than the 0.76 eutectoid composition, so it's a hypo-eutectoid steel, okay? If we make it red hot, it's going to be in the gamma phase, the austenite phase, let's cool it down, okay? Here, just to double check, the whole thing is austenite. Okay, we cool down even more. Okay. There we go. Now, we're in the range where it exists, where the, uh, what's going to happen now, there's two phases in, in this phase region that we're in now. The, phase regions, uh, the phases are alpha and gamma. So what's happening is that we're getting regions of alpha forming within the gamma. The alpha has, has less carbon in it. So what's happening, these alpha regions are pushing the carbon out into the existing gamma. Okay, It's cooling down. The, the body center cubic structure is uh, becoming more stable. It's starting to grow, but it can't accommodate the carbon. So it's pushing it out into the gamma phase. The gamma phase is just increasing in carbon concentration as we call. There we go. We can see it's following this line right here. Okay? Until we reach a temperature at which, boom, the gamma phase has now reached. Okay, so the amount of alpha, the, the orange here, has increased, but the gamma phase, okay, has become carbon rich to the point where it's reached a eutectoid composition and a temperature, the eutectoid temperature. What's going to happen next is that the gamma phase is now going to transform into uh, a perlite or the microconstituent. Okay, so the gamma turns into the perlite. The, um, the, the, the pro uh, eutectoid uh, phase in this case is, uh, is, uh, is ferrite or the phase that forms before the eutectoid reaction occurs, is ferrite. And 
So we see the ferrite here, and then the regions in between the ferrite are going to be filled, okay, with the with perlite, with microconstituent. And you can see that right here. The light regions are ferrite, okay? So they, they, they start to grow first, and then the remaining alpha turns into the eutectoid. So this is a, um, a classical kind of, or a good example of a, of a, of a micrograph of a hypo-eutectoid steel. The large amount of ferrite in the hypo-eutectoid steel makes it very uh, malleable. So these are soft steels, good if you want to shape uh, the material afterwards, good for making, say, sheets that you can stamp, etc. So that's a hypo-eutectoid steel. Let's look at now a eutectoid steel. A eutectoid steel has a eutectoid composition, 0.76. When it's red hot, when you're over here, it's all gamma. As we start cooling, as we start cooling, we're going to approach the eutectoid point, at which point all the gamma turns into the microconstituent. Okay? It divides into this fine mixture of cementite and ferrite, okay, or alpha ion. And if we cool slowly, we get the perlite. If we cool at a different rate, we can get what's called upper bainite, got lower bainite. If we cool quickly, we get martensite, and that's what picture D is right here. So depends how quickly we cool it. So um, uh, the, the, these uh, these three here can be regarded as uh, the eutectoids, but. The martensite is not a eutectoid, okay? It's, for, it, it, it's been cooled too, so quickly, the carbon hasn't had a chance to um, uh, separate, or, or, the, or we haven't had a chance to form two separate phases. Upon reheating the martensite, you can transform it and, uh, and partially allow some of that uh, reaction to occur and some of that separation uh, of the material into phases that are carbon rich and uh, uh, carbon deficient, if you want to call it that. Let's now look at a hyper-eutectoid steel. Hyper. Hyper means the carbon content is beyond that of the eutectoid composition. Okay, so higher than 0.76, rounded here to 0.8. Here's an example of a 1% uh, carbon, weight percent carbon uh, steel. Again, when we, at a high temperature, when it's red hot, you take some of this steel, make it red hot, what's it going to be? It's going to be all in the austenite phase. It's got little A's here. Um, this is a different uh, diagram from a different source to the previous ones. Um, and uh, uh, we've got austenite, labeled A. Now what's going to happen here at the grain boundaries? As we get below this, this interface here on the phase diagram, we are going to start forming cementite. Okay, so we've got two, two phases in this phase, uh, in this phase field that I'm pointing to right now. So the cementite is going to start coming out okay at the grain boundaries of the arsenite and then what's going to happen is the cementite is uh is iron is is carbon rich okay so it's taking the carbon out of the of the remaining arsenite which is heading so the carbon content of the arsenite is going to be heading down 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 until it hits the eutectoid composition at the eutectoid temperature and then boom all the remaining alpha, oh sorry, uh, don't say alpha, I meant austenite phase, okay? All the remaining austenite phase turns into the, the eutectoid, in this case labeled perlite, okay? And you can see that here in this micrograph. You can see this, the, the white uh, um, 
the, the white phase here at the grain boundaries, okay, or the colony boundaries. Uh, it seems to form a, a, a continuous uh, cementite here. Okay, so this is the 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 is the, called the pro. This is the word I was searching for earlier. The pro eutectoid uh, phase, the phase that forms before the eutectoid reaction, is cementite. Okay, whereas with a hypo eutectoid steel, the pro eutectoid phase is ferrite. Okay, that's the difference between hypo and hyper eutectoid steels, is the pro eutectoid phase. And then, uh, in both cases, what happens is the remaining arsenite turns into the eutectoid phase. And you can see this beautiful perlite here. So, here you see the, uh, the pro-eutectoid phase being cementite. Cementite is extremely hard, and so we expect this material to be hard. Okay? And that's why high carbon steels are hard, because the pro-eutectoid phase is cementite. Now, you know, just by looking at the micrograph, you can actually tell how much carbon is, is in it without chemical analysis, you know, to a, good, to a reasonable approximation. So let's see how we can do this. It says here, this sample has been heated above the A3 temperature to yield only arsenite and then slowly cooled to result in a mixture of ferrite and perlite. Experience tells us the lighter phase, lighter phase, lighter phase in the above microstructure are ferrite and the darker one is perlite. How do we estimate the carbon content of the steel? Well, the A3 temperature, this line here, this demarcation, or when we have uh, a single phase alpha, uh, fat, uh, single phase gamma, and when we're in a phase field where we have a mixture of phases, alpha and gamma, and this is known as A3. So we're We've heated it to above the A3. Okay, we're somewhere up here. We don't know where right now. And then we cooled it down. And then what happened? Okay, they tell us the lighter phase is ferrite. Okay, so we know that the pro eutectoid phase is ferrite. So we know that we're on the the left hand side of the eutectoid here. It's a hypo eutectoid steel. Okay. Um, but where along this line are we? Well, let's just take a look at this. And if we say that the weight percent of the pro eutectoid phase, I mean, sorry, uh, the, the, the weight percent of the eutectoid phase is proportional to the area covered by it in this micrograph. And if we look at it, we see it's about half of it is covered with half of the micrograph is covered with the gray region. Right, half the micrograph is dark gray. This dark gray phase here is the eutectoid. The light, these light grains here are ferrite. So let's just estimate half half. If you worked in a metallurgical research, you have a computer program that will calculate the surface areas for you. Um, okay. So we know that what's going to happen when we cool, cool this material at this point, we're going to have a mixture of ferrite and microconstituent. So if we, the tie line for us between the microconstituent of this composition And the ferrite will look something like this. There's my tie line. My tie line goes from the alpha. Okay. There's the alpha. The, oh, sorry. That that was the. My, this is the eutectoid phase. See, we don't go all the way to the other side because I don't want to know the phase fraction of cementite. I want to know the phase fraction of eutectoid. Okay, my microconstituent. As that's why I've drawn a vertical line here at the composition, average composition of the eutectoid. And over here, what I have here is the alpha. Okay? I know that I'm roughly halfway along this line, and that would give me uh, 
that will tell me that the sample is uh, roughly half alpha and half eutectoid. So uh, what composition, if I use the, the, the level, level rule, will give me half half um, composition. Okay. So if you remember, it's the length of this lever of the whole length will give, tell me how much eutectoid there is. So for me to get half for that result would require that the that the composition of the steel represented by this micrograph is somewhere around 0.4%. So that's an example how we can estimate the carbon percentage using a micrograph of the steel.